Welcome to the Commonwealth Matters. I'm Richard Nelson, Executive Director of the Commonwealth Policy Center. And on this edition of the program, joining us is Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Senator Paul, welcome to the program. Glad to be with you, Richard. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey, just a few days ago, you and several of your colleagues sent a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland asking him to investigate Planned Parenthood affiliates for unlawfully receiving Paycheck Protection Program loans last year. And uh, you had just discovered uh, from the Small Business Administration just a few weeks ago that the 38 Planned Parenthood affiliates that were called out last year, uh, most of them did not return those loans that totaled uh, $80 million. Uh, you also found that uh, two of those uh, Planned Parenthood affiliates actually applied again for, uh, for, for a second draw loan with full knowledge of their ineligibility. Uh, Senator Paul, what is it going to take to get Planned Parenthood to comply with the law? You know, the government uh, in the midst of COVID set up this program, it's called PPP, and it's this uh, borrowed money that we borrowed from the future that we're giving to people whose businesses were affected. It was intended to go to small businesses, so there were rules saying that large businesses, particularly large nonprofits that have affiliates like Planned Parenthood, were ineligible. But $80 million was passed out, applied for by Planned Parenthood. They got the money. And then the Trump administration, under the civil rights uh, action, said that this was incorrect and shouldn't have happened. And what ended up happening is a few of the Planned Parenthood organizations sent the money back. The vast majority of them did nothing. But then we discovered when the Biden administration came into power that they actually uh, gave second loans to the entities that they had already said was illegal to send the first loans. So I asked the director when he came before our committee recently, I said, have you changed your position on affiliates? Is, you know, somehow the rule that said Planned Parenthood was inel ineligible been changed? And he said, no. So the question is, are they breaking the law by doing this? We do believe they're breaking the law. So we've referred it for prosecution to the Department of Justice. Now, we don't have a great deal of hope that uh, President Biden's Department of Justice will do much with this. We've also sent it to the Small Business Administration and said, you're supposed to be surveying this. You're supposed to be using surveillance for illegally gained loans and grants. What are you doing about this? But this is also another Biden appointee. There's one third avenue, though, where we might have some success. There's an inspector general, and this is part of the government where each agency of government has an inspector general. And this is like a watchdog. It's actually a part of government that actually does provide some useful information and oversight as to whether government's breaking the law or doing things that are either wasteful or illegal. So the inspector general is looking at this um, and we hope they will look specifically at this group. We think it's being looked at in a general way, but we are providing that information. And really, this is something that really should not happen. When the recent uh, bill came up for more COVID money, they actually tried to change the law to make it easier for Planned Parenthood to get money, and we blocked that. In blocking that, we thought that was the, or could be the end of the story, but even without the law being changed to accommodate Planned Parenthood, they're still passing money out to Planned Parenthood. So the good news is that I am now the ranking member, the highest ranking Republican on the Small Business Administration Committee. We're responsible and oversee these PPP funds. So we are going to be dogged. We are not going to give Planned Parenthood any kind of breathing room. We are gonna to continue to uh, pursue this ill-gotten money, this illegally dispersed money and we'll see where it goes. We don't have friends in the administration. They don't care. In fact, I think they'll keep passing money out to Planned Parenthood, but we are going to pursue this. This is a big deal on two fronts. One is it's uh, the federal government is acting as if there's an unending supply of money. Uh, that latest uh, stimulus package uh, gave out trillions. Uh, so there, there's the issue of fiscal responsibility, but then also we're talking about the right to life issue. Uh, Planned Parenthood is the single largest abortion provider in the nation. According to their 2019-2020 annual report, they performed 354,871 abortions. And on top of it, Senator Paul, you know this, but many of the viewers may not, uh, they received $618 million 
from the federal government, or from the federal government, by the way, that's 38% of their overall expenditure. So it's already a heavily subsidized nonprofit, uh, but it's a controversial activity that they're involved with. Uh, and of course, it's and, 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 and here's the sad thing. Many Republicans go home and they say they're pro-life, but we had a vote on this recently to extend the PPP program to let people have more of this money and to keep filing for this money. Not the people who have already got it, but to let more people sign up and apply. And that means Planned Parenthood signing up for more money. And I said this on the floor, that a vote to extend this PPP program is a vote to allow more money to go to Planned Parenthood. And yet some so-called defenders of the, of the right to life still voted for the PPP program because I think their allegiance to big government is, bit, is, is for them more profound than their allegiance to the right to life movement. And so people in the right to life movement need to watch closely because many of the people you think are your friends when push comes to shove, it's the same with Planned Parenthood money. I don't vote for any of these budgets that include money for Planned Parenthood, but often the pro-life groups don't score these votes because they know so many Republican so-called friends vote for big government. So I think we should hold people's feet to the fire and say, if you really oppose this money going to Planned Parenthood, you should, vote, you should vote against spending bills that have money in it for Planned Parenthood. See, we usually don't get an up or down vote on Planned Parenthood money. You get a vote on this enormous budget. But to my mind, the issue is important enough that we shouldn't have it. And if the budget comes down, fine. And then what would happen is we'd have a budget without funding for Planned Parenthood. That's what would happen if you had enough Republicans that actually said and walked the walk of what they say they believe in with regard to life. Planned Parenthood had a budget or at least their expenditures in 2019, 2020, according to their annual report that year, was $1.57 billion. That's billion with a B. Why do they need any help at all from the federal government? Uh, well, here's the argument they make. You know, they say it's not about abortion. I think it's all about abortion because everything that Planned Parenthood says they do other than abortion is done at community health centers. And ever since Obamacare passed and even before that and since then, billions of dollars have been spent on community health centers. So community health centers actually have real doctors, but the um, uh, Planned Parenthood doesn't really have doctors. So and they even say they do mammograms at Planned Parenthood. It's not it's not true. You have to go to a doctor. And if you really want a, a real exam for breast cancer, you go to see a doctor, but you don't see him at Planned Parenthood. And so really, it's dishonest. If Planned Parenthood went away tomorrow, what you'd find is you would no longer have government funded abortions, but you'd still have plenty of health care for the poor because we have the community health centers, which are probably 300 times greater as far as uh, in expense than, than Planned Parenthood and in reach. So um, anyway, thanks for having me on. I think we're going to have to run, but thanks a lot for having me on. Thank you. Keep up the good work, Senator Paul. God bless. Thank you.